one folks in there. We, yeah. Uh, so good. They can hear my, my haircut story this morning. So I went this morning to get my hair did and, um, my head is my dad. My dad. <laughs> oh, hi dad. <clears throat> so I went in to see my, 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 uh, my stylist this morning and, um, she's never, she's, you know, cause, and, and I was married to a hairdresser for 16 years. So I know the business I've owned salons. So anyways, it's just rough on the back and their arms constantly. And I mean, just for a living, that's some pretty good labor. I mean, it's not like it's working a jackhammer or, a, or, you know, throwing up wallboard or putting on shingles, but puts a toll on the body. Anyways, the funny story is, um, so she, uh, when she did my wife's hair, uh, last week or she was talking about having some back pain. And so I brought in, um, my little, uh, what I do is I don't know if you're familiar with something called auricular therapy. It's where we treat the ear. So mm -hmm. all the ear is basically uh, a reflex to the entire body. So there's a point on your ears for literally every single organ and tissue in the body. So she, she's, she does, has her own booth in a room with another girl. It's a really nice, fancy place. And so the place is, you know, your people who are waiting for your appointments are waiting in there. And um, I was like, so I hear you're having some, you know, some back pain and this, that, and the other. She goes, yeah, it's my tailbone. And uh, I said, you know, so you're coccyx. Do you have some coccyx pain? <laughs> and she goes, yeah. So I said, well, I brought you something. And she was like, what? Because she knows I'm kind of a card. So I, I pull out of my jacket these big old forceps, right? They're, they're long and they got a really pointy, you know, end on them. And then I pull out this card, which is these little um, seeds on a, on like a little square bandaid about the size of a quarter inch. And uh, you, you put them on the ear on the corresponding places that actually you have pain. It's extremely powerful. Like I've actually done this in trade shows and stuff like that using needles and seeds. And I'll just have a line of people. Where's your pain? What's it on a scale of one to 10? Is it worse or is it better? Does it do what makes it better? And I just boop, 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 treat the ears, 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 blah, 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 blah. and we have just dramatic reduction in pain. And I mean, wow. instantly, like within seconds. Anyways, you should have seen the, the other people waiting in there today, all these ladies and stuff while I'm sitting here <laughs> putting weird little, you know, band-aid colored square patches um, on my stylist hair this morning. It was pretty fun, but it worked like a champ. She was like, what? Great. So great. But well, making... hey, we uh, let's get. Uh, we have a couple people here. Cool. It'll probably take. You know, we always have people coming in three, five minutes late. They had to go get, so their, we'll, to go uh, get their cup of tea to join us. Yeah. So hello, everyone, and my father. You can always chat on the right hand side. You'll see that chat functionality. You can. This is live, so go ahead and put That's in well. your chat and say hello. Let us know you're here. Um, hey, real quick about that ear thing. People say that about your feet too, right? That it has yeah. every nerve ending in your body. Yeah. Reflexology, you know, Koreans do it on their hands. So there's hands and there's feet. The body is nothing but an imaging pattern on it too. There's also what's called the balance method or uh, uh, Dr. Ton, uh, uh, 12 points in acupuncture, 12 and 12. Anyways, the body is actually very uh, uh, mirrored, right? So we have this fractal geometry, but nothing compares to the ears. Mm. You can massage, you know, there's spots on the ear, like your, your abdomen and your, 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 your shoulders and your eyes on different parts of the hands and feet. Absolutely. But you're not going to get like literally within seconds, uh, relief that you do from the ears. I, I like to use the example. It's like R2D2, you know, he can control everything on the death star, that little port, you know, just spins it. And uh, so your ears are like the little R two D two port. That's what I say. So there, when, when you're when you're when, when you're growing in utero, the ears um, act buds actually come out when the brain starts, and far before any of your organs even manifest, you have you know ears. It's pretty amazing. Hmm. So they are the access hub to the body. It's pretty profound. I mean, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I'm not even kidding when I tell you about like like a dog and pony show, like you like really like, wow, like magic. It's like, it's like that. If you do it, if you, if it's done appropriately now, it doesn't cure the pain because you got to get to the root cause, right? If it's caused by other things, but as far as an intervention, auricular therapy, and we can use needles, seeds, lasers, tuning forks, all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, temporary relief. Yes. It's amazing. Right. So who's going to come up with 
the first question. All right. Anybody have any questions to start or should I go ahead and just start? Yeah, I'd say we just commit some. All right. So about some good stuff. <laughs> I just told you that uh, it actually started with my stepson had it in November, then my husband got it, and then my son got strep throat right before Christmas. So of course everyone's doing these round of antibiotics and, and luckily in Sweden, they don't over prescribe. They actually will test to see if it's a virus or bacterial before they prescribe it. Sure. And even then only if you really want it, do they give it to you unlike the States where they give, you know, the prescription yeah, for antibiotics for the common cold. Um, are there any alternatives? Because I know that the bacteria is kind of becoming resistant to antibiotics. It's, it's, you know, changing and it's making it harder to react to the antibiotics. Um, and it's also extremely hard on your body because it kills all the bacteria, good and bad, versus just, yeah. you know, targeting what it should. So any, well, that's, the, uh, that's, the, that's the, yeah, sure. Absolutely. There, there's, that's the prevailing narrative. It's actually not quite that doom and gloom and it's not quite that accurate, which okay. is kind of blasphemy when, when it comes to the realms where I, I operate in within functional medicine. Um, the thing about it is, is this, um, antibiotics have their place. But you're absolutely right. You definitely need to, uh, if along the lines of something like something like strep throat, we can swab for that and we can tell if it's strep or not. So that level of accuracy is really root, you know, routine in the clinic. You can go to a walk-in clinic and they can, you know, you know, strep swab <clears throat> and confirm. Then there's the antibiotics, right? Then then most of the time they're going to, you know, give you something like what I call placebo cillin which is amoxicillin, amox, right? It really just, it, 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 it can work, but it just doesn't whatever. But here's the thing, not all antibiotics kills all the bugs in the body. See, what, what happens is, is people kind of forget that if we're saying on one hand that it, it doesn't kill the bad bugs because they're immune to it, well, guess what? Your good bugs can also be immune to it and you're not killing them off either. So it is all, and when you use the term antibiotic, um, that's like saying automobile. It's too big of a broad term. You know, there's a big difference in automobiles if it's a Prius or a Hummer or a Maserati. Okay. So antibiotics, same thing. You're not going to kill off everything <clears throat> um, good nor bad. What it does is, is antibiotics are not designed to nuke all bad bugs. It's to bring their count down. So that way your innate immune system can kick in and be not overburdened by the populace. It's like a restaurant, right? You can, you know, if you, you, this is why sometimes you have to wait. And then the maitre d' or the hostess or something like that will say, okay, hey, we have your table ready for you. And you'll go, well, why are there empty tables? Well, because the back end to make your food can't put a whole bunch of orders in and have quality stuff, right? So you have to govern the flow of a restaurant. You have to govern the flow to your immune system. So what antibiotics do, even if they don't, cover everything or blow up everything or kill off all the good, the bad, and the ugly, it does knock the count down. So it takes this over uh, compensation strain of your immune system to be able to kick in. So the answer is never an antibiotic alone. It's always support of the biological terrain. Now the support of the biological terrain, when you're in an acute event or go an infection, you still need to do the very things that you should have been doing as a preventative right? You have to change your environment. And I will tell you the most principal thing is light, light, light cycles govern what your body does in response to so many things. Okay. So most of the time people are going to experience an infection in the shorter daytime of your geographic location. Like you, where you're at, night times are longer right? Daytimes are shorter. So we don't get access to the very light cycle that goes through our eyeball and tells our brain and neurotransmitters and immunoglobulins how to act and respond and to build up the body. This is why people through the season of, I'm going to call it October through February, that's when more deaths occur. That's when more infections occur because we have what? Light cycle goes down, days get more dark, but then now the stress goes up. Why? Because we have Halloween and, you know, everybody doing that and all the candy that comes along with that. 
and then November's Thanksgiving and all the feeding and the you know uh, pecan pie that comes with that. And then you got December and all the candies and stuff that come food to come with that. And then you got New Year's and all that stuff and the alcohol that comes with that. And then you got February and you got Valentine's Day and all the fun stuff that comes with that. It's not like all of a sudden all the commie bugs just come out and start getting the whole world. You see what I'm saying? It's lifestyle and environment. So the moral of the story here is, is there the alternatives, because I don't do, I don't practice alternative medicine. The alternative is to prepare yourself going into that season, right? It's preventative. So what you want to make sure you do is not take part in extensive consumption of, you know, the stimulants, the alcohols, the, the, the sugars, the refined stuff and all the other kind of fun stuff not extending your nights, you know, dancing the night away and partying till, you know, two and three o'clock in the morning. Who does that? Right. I mean, I'm <laughs> not a clue. Right. And then, then all, then you got everybody else who brings their Petri dish around because everybody's hugging and giving a little kiss and how you doing and things like that. I mean, you're bringing, you know, you're making a very interesting thing now under low humidity, a heat treated room with artificial lights, and then there's music and then there's stress and then you see what I'm saying? So it's a, you got to talk about the symphony. So what you want to do is not, you want to go in properly hydrated and rested. Okay. I don't like the word moderation, everything in moderation. You do five things in, in moderation and now you're out of moderation because of collectiveness. But so you want to stay hydrated. You want to stay rested. You want to be able to, you know, make sure your life cycles are there. Enjoy it, but just don't overdo it. Then the other thing is you got to use therapeutic lamps. You've got to keep UV light on your body. If you can't get in the sun and your area is not able to do that because it's, you know, 10 degrees, well, you're going to have to get a, a light. And there's various UV lights ranging from uh, reptile bulbs from the pet store to tanning salons to uh, uh, UV lamps from like Sperty, S-P-E-R-T-I, a little more expensive, right? Because we know we talk about seasonal affected disorder and everybody in these little lamps, right? Whatever. Well, that's just that spectrum of lamp that reproduces the sun, but it doesn't give the UV. We have to have the ultraviolet. So that would be it is get your immune system protected from the silliness of the environment that we're in. Okay. And then also make sure you govern your light and get sunlight. If you don't have sunlight, you need to, dare I say, artificially bring it into the environment. So that's it. So what do you got to add? What do you have to take away? So that would be it. As far as all the little things like echinacea and elderberry and zinc and vitamin C and uh, coldies and all the other elixirs and stuff like that, they have some merit, but you're not going to overcome any of the things I just talked about with pills, potions, powders, and elixirs. You're not. You need rest. You need light. Right. You need to be hydrated. You need to be fed properly. You need to reduce the stress of the season. That's really the, the, the thing of it. I know people want to take something for something, but that doesn't work. Now, <clears throat> as far as your particular case for talking acutely and we're talking about something in the throat or maybe like I say a strep throat, there is a zinc form that's very useful for help creating that localized environment. Remember, always talk the whole body systemic, but localized. And that's a form of zinc called gluconate. So zinc gluconate, not zinc oxide, you know, not zinc picolinate, not aspartate, malate, glycinate, none of the other names, gluconate. Now, the reason why that's important is because it keeps the zinc on the surface of the mucosa. The last name of a mineral will always determine it's target tissue. That makes sense? So like if I needed to get zinc in your mitochondria, I'm going to use zinc or rotate. Okay. They all, the last name dictates where you want that mineral to go. Okay. So the key here is to use zinc gluconate and they, and you can even get it in powder. You can get it in lozenges. You know, zinc is a very powerful direct form of anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, right? and immune uh, um, localized support. That's why we, you know, you can dip things in zinc and galvanize them, right? Protect them from rusting and that kind of fun stuff. But so that would be that. Then the second thing is, while I'm on a roll here, is good old fashioned hot water salt gargles. Profound. 
I know, right? <laughs> no- oh, my God. They make me want to gag. <laughs> you know what I mean? No one likes to do it. And uh, But it's amazing. So what I recommend my patients do is, is you make a saturated water solution, which basically means keep adding salt to the water until it won't dissolve anymore. It's going to be super salty. Not iodized or cheap salt. Get you some nice... Fleur de Sal, which is one of my favorites, which is a French sea salt. It's amazing. It's very gray. Dissolve that in really warm water and take a tablespoon or two, tilt your head back, gargle, let it go in there, and it'll kind of burn. It'll kind of, you know, really, and it'll cut all that <clears throat> that slime and stuff out. So expectorate all that and then pop, you know, some zinc gluconate lozenge or something. Boom. You won't need no antibiotics. Wow. And so is that preventative as well or just when yes. you have the issues? Okay. The prevention and the treatment are more times than not the same. Oh, okay. Good it's pretty cool know. that way. Yes, you can use essential oils. There's a variety of those, right? Uh, there's a famous blend out there called Thieves, which is like clove and thyme and stuff like that. It's very good. You can actually drip that on the, on the sea salt first, let it get into the crystal and then dissolve that in the water and then it will emulsify into the water and you can, you can hit that. Make sense. You can also yeah. do the same thing. Essential oils um, that most essential oils are antimicrobial. They're not antibiotic. There's a big difference, right? Cause you know, you've, you, you've seen bacteria and fungus grow on, on, uh, on cloves, on garlic, right? On just about anything that we say is antimicrobial. So it doesn't mean it's like sterile. So you can uh, put various uh, essential oils into that. You can use manuka honey, which is a which is a honey that's made. You know, um, it's generally in Australia because if they have there's essential oil infused in it because the bees do it that way. All right, so you can use oils of clove. You can use thyme. You can use melaleuca alternifolia, also known as tea tree. Um, you know, different ones, you know, so I, you can add, add plus or minus an essential oil to that gargle, but treat it locally and uh, do the zinc gluconate. And there you go. So it's amazing. Can you buy zinc gluconate anywhere or just about anywhere? It's, it's pretty, okay. pretty ubiquitous. There's not too many places that you can't do it. Stay away from the lozenges <clears throat> that have uh, artificial colors and dyes and preservatives and stuff. It doesn't matter if it's got a little sugar in it. I know people kind of get sugar Nazi up on this stuff. We're like, oh, any sugar, it's ridiculous. It is, it's just too much. Um, a lozenge that uses cane sugar or something, it's not the end of the world. Okay. okay. So, yep, you can get them anywhere. It's pretty cool. All right. I'll see if anybody else has any questions. And then nasal irrigation, that's the other thing. Get, you know, clean that because the bugs will find their way out of your throat and up into the passages and into your station tubes. Have you ever used a navage before? I know most people have probably heard of a neti pot. I've heard of a neti pot, but a, yeah. Yeah, but that's just too cumbersome, you know, and it's just kind of whatever. There's this unit out there, and you can get it at most uh, uh, drugstores, <clears throat> CVS and Walgreens or whatever. It's called navage, navage. Kind of sounds like nasal massage, and that's exactly what it is. It's a unit about this big. And you put salt water in it. They've got these little pods, but I don't keep buying their pods. Anyways, so you put warm water. Do the same thing I was just talking about, like with the salt in the water. And you stick these two things up your nose that are coming the little, little, little like this. And it's got a tank. And it literally, it's battery powered. It pushes water in one nose, up into the sinuses, and sucks it out of the other. And then drops it down into the well underneath it. So you can sit here and talk and your nose is just getting flushed with water. It's amazing. It works really, really good to clean out the pipes. And you can change the direction of it too. It's pretty cool. So Navage, that's another one. So clean out the pipes, gargle it up. Navage. Navage. Holy crap. N-A-V-A-G-E maybe, something of that nature. If you if you just put it close to the word, if you if you, you searched it, um, it'll come up. Nasal. Irrigation yeah, or nasal clean navage. navage. And then you can YouTube watching people trying to do it. <laughs> it's pretty hilarious. I, I don't know if I want to go that far. It doesn't sound right. Really. <laughs> yeah, navage. Yeah. So <laughs> clean the atmosphere. Of course, I do lasers up the nostrils too. You can put, you know, uh-huh. light, light on, shining it in the back of your throat and up your nose. That works really well too, but that's, that's advanced stuff. But. Well, talk to us. Okay. So I want to. 
go um, until people start asking questions. Just type your questions into the chat and I'll go ahead and ask Dr. Beck them and we'll, we'll get things rolling. But don't, oh, you're much clearer now. Did you do something? You were a little fuzzy. I clicked before. on and I clicked off. Okay. I was, check, I was checking <laughs> something to make sure I turned things off on my end. Okay. All right. Well, don't be shy. Ask questions. Put them in the chat functionality over there. Um, so I want I to I want to get back to the light thing for sure. Mm -hmm. Hang on, let's see again. Hmm. There we go. Okay, it's there. my cam. It's my camera. It's it's a very dynamic camera. So if I if I move back or forward, it it changes the focal point. So here I'll just try to stand right about here. <laughs> okay. So in the I think some of the feedback I got from the summit. Um, there was a man who said you touched upon it, but he was um, surprised that we didn't talk more about kind of the microwave environment that we all live in. Yeah. With all like the Wi-Fi and everything, you know, the electromagnetic whatnot, um, and how there's so many studies coming out. Now, I have not looked into this issue really at all, so I wanted to ask you about it and address it here. Well, yeah. So one of the environmental inputs of my method called balance protocol, the in inputs are air, water, light, sound, electromagnetic fields, and food. There's six of them. So with EMF, I've been talking about this since 1996. This is prior to cell phones because I was talking to people about the, the microwaves that get emitted from different appliances up to and including I remember when I was a kid, my, my stepdad got in a, in a motorcycle accident and got a settlement and we were, we were, we were, I was, I grew up low middle, lower middle class, you know, single wide trailer in North Carolina. And, um, we went and bought an Amana radar range. We got a microwave. <laughs> it's unbelievable. We were like, woo, we risk now. So anyways, I always felt weird around it and whenever it turned on, I didn't like it. It was just, it just, even as a kid, I remember it. My mom trying to make fudge in it and stuff like that and hot dogs. It was, yeah. Anyways. Um, so as I got older, of course, I got into all of that stuff because of, you know, um, again, my stepdad was in broadcasting and radio stations and then, you know, ham radio and all that other kind of fun stuff. Anyways, there's some dangers to radio frequency and microwaves are radio frequency. So are these things that we call phones. This is a microwave emitter and receiver. It uses microwaves. So every time you're sitting here, you know, talking to somebody um, on your phone, you're, you're literally microwaving your brain. That's what it's doing. Okay. So in the microwave world, they do the tests of safety based upon does it generate heat? So that's why they'll say it has an SAR or a specific absorption rate. If you go to settings, disclosures, legal, it's hidden in there that they tell you, don't put this on your head. They say, use the headphones that come with it or use speakerphone. Right. Okay. Well, the thing about it is, is radio frequency microwaves is an EMF, an electromagnetic force or field. That is ubiquitous. I mean, oh my gosh, there's more cell phones and, and uh, microwave transceivers on the planet than there are people. That's a fact. We hit that in, in uh, four years ago. So then now they're rolling out 5G. Okay. So the thing about it is, is, you know, you know, you know, 4G LTE and now they're 5G. That doesn't mean five gigahertz. It means fifth generation. So there, there's only so much bandwidth within the spectrum. So in our environment, people are using Wi-Fi routers. Of course, I'm wired. I don't have mm -hmm. any of that stuff. I can bust out oh, my really? meter. I can bust out my meter and I'll put it on and you'll be like, what? None of that stuff. So smart meters, deck phones, you know, your cordless phones, all your Bluetooth devices, mices, keyboards. You got little buttons from Amazon on your refrigerator that you push that are Bluetooth to order your Tide Pods, you know. There's just all these things, the ring doorbell, everything is Wi-Fi. You, you got your neighbors with, you know, with 20 different devices. You've got 20 different devices. Everybody's got it. There's Wi-Fi in your car. It's everywhere. So now we have all these microwaves of all these different frequencies passing through our bodies and cellular tissue. It's disruptive. The science is very clear. I mean, I've had just hundreds of studies for years. But now I really have an archive and I've got over 2000 
It's replete. Now it's really big. There's a lot more research going on to it. And they're stepping out of, you know, rats and monkeys. Of course, they've done some other things all the way to ranging from, you know, sea slugs to, to, to bees to all kinds of animals. But yeah, so we are a microwave planet. It is everywhere. And if people don't learn how to mitigate that and get disconnected, this is the new tobacco. Right. Remember, doctors smoke more camels and lucky strike than anybody. Right. All the advertisements, you know, um, I'm going to tell you right now, cell phones and microwaves. I've been I've been. Mm, mm, mm. And then now you well, got no, people, a bunch of studies on men should never keep them in their pant pocket because. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's just radiating your nuts. Girls, you, you know, it's always in that back pocket. <laughs> That's right. You know, it's radi it, It's nailing your, your ovaries, women carrying it in their bra just zapping their breast tissue. Then you got, you're letting kids do this stupid virtual reality crap, sticking it right on their prefrontal cortex. And we wonder why they have anger issues and ADD and all kinds of stuff. And, and not only is it here, it's zapping your what? That's all your sinuses. Remember what I was telling you about that? I mean, you microwave you, that stuff, sitting there letting kids play games. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, it's just terrible. So that's it. You got it. You got to get disconnected. So Kim wants to know, she said there are products on the market for home office use uh, to address the EMFs. Do they work and do you recommend them? It's a great question and I love it. And I'm going to answer it with two words. Hell no. Not a single one. There is no plug-in. There is no sticker. There's no cell phone case. There no, there's no magic pyramid. There's no pendulum. There is not a single device. And believe you me, I mean, I lecture on this all the time. Um, Facebook group. So I get the question all the time. I love it when I'm asked. And that's my answer. Not only do I just ask my opinion, I've tested them. And I'll show you. I've got, this is my little case for whenever I go to um, patients' houses and I test all their stuff. I'll give you a little inside peek. So this is my little bag of tricks. This is for testing EMF stuff. All right. So I'm going to give you an example here. A little impromptu. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Okay. And while you're doing that, she asked if energy, uh, energy-based treatments like Reiki help. Okay, we'll come back to that. Okay, okay energy-based treatment. The first thing is this is a meter. It's called an acoustometer, and it mm -hmm. tests all the way from 200 megahertz to 8 gigahertz. There's other meters out there like these called the Tri-Field, and a lot of people like to buy these because they're like 150 bucks. I, this is what I call a glorified... Uh, paperweight. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't waste your money on these because it's 150 bucks. Spend 300 bucks and get the correct meter. Okay. So anyways, if you, and I've metered these, it's really easy to do. Okay. So you can take your cell phone and have a meter and turn it on and see what the reading is. Then buy one of those silly little stickers, blue shield, uh, smart case. There's all kinds of them. Q link. Okay and stick it on your phone and see if it changes the measurement. You'll find that it doesn't. Put a little dangly around your neck, doesn't, okay? So the bottom line is I've even bought them, so which ones, and I'll try not to ad hominem anybody, and I've spent 50 bucks to buy the little plug in the wall, I busted it open, and there literally was clay inside with somebody's thumbprint mushed into it up against the electrical prongs. But it's magic clay from Russia, right? Or the Suge Knight, and there's different things like that. Um, so what does work? Then? They don't. So They're proclaiming that they work, but they don't work. You can't, The only way, it's called my 3D approach. There's only three ways, okay? D number one, disconnect. Got to turn the damn thing off. Number two, distance. The farther you away, the better are you are. Number three, duration. If you're going to have to be on your phone, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go boom, speakerphone, and I'm going to distance. I'm going to set it here, and I'm going to talk, and I'm not going to be on it for hours and hours and hours and hours, right? So like when I talk to my patients, I use a Skype phone, and I don't want to constantly have this on. So disconnect. So your monitor frequency is less than the phone EM, EMS. Yes. My monitor is not making microwaves. Oh, okay. It puts out an electrical field and it puts out a magnetic field, but it's a, I also ground it. 
So there's a lot to this. This is the kind of stuff that I cover in my program, which, you know, I, you know, give you to give to your audience. If you like my balance protocol in Viro, I cover all this extensively, but to answer your question, hell no, not a single device. There's not a dangly, a pendant, a crystal, a pyramid, a sticker, a case, or none of that. Because here's the thing. If it did block EMF, the device wouldn't work. Uh, it's that simple. If the, if you can still get a call, it won't work. That's how you can test your microwave to see if it's leaking. Okay? Take a phone, stick it in your microwave, don't turn it on. Close it and call your phone. If your phone rings, well, guess what? I mean, this is real simple stuff. Cut away all the all the noise and confusion and the marketing and all the conflation. Nope, there's not one. Okay. Okay, that's so, it. As far as energy work is concerned, mm -hmm. it can. But I've been practicing for over, getting ready to go on my 23rd year. I have gone to countless seminars. I have taught countless um, physical therapists, massage therapists, physicians, chiropractors, nurse practitioners, acupuncturists, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Physical body work, massage therapy, apply kinesiology, all that kind of fun stuff. Here's the deal. The, the, the problem with energy work is it needs, you have the, the, the patient and the therapist within the environment that they're in. I know places that have free Wi-Fi for their patients boosted so that way where they're waiting for their energy work, they can sit there and play on their cell phone. It's kind of silly, right? That's like, oh, I, would you like the soup of the day? I would. Oh, would you like it with the rat poop or without the rat poop? <laughs> right? I mean, come on. So you've got that. So the energy of the environment. They're also sometimes an artificial light. All right? Know those Himalayan salt lamps have no therapeutic value whatsoever either. <laughs> That's the, so in the energy work, it can, but it's highly dependent upon two people, their health, and a lot of things like that. I've seen it be very beneficial, Reiki included. There's other energy stuff, cranial sacral things. Yes, it has premise. However, I've only seen it manifest in quantifiable benefit about 20% of the time. It's actually very low. And most of the practitioners that I've seen are not physically healthy themselves. Mm -hmm. So the conduit needs to be healthy. They need to be a pillar of health. They need to have an admittance of love and passion and, and generosity and humility and not be morbidly obese and losing their hair and having dark, sallow eyes. I don't care if they're passionate about doing it. If you can't manifest it in your life, that would be no. That's kind of like hiring a fat personal trainer, right? That's or a dentist with a jacked up grill. I mean, really? <laughs> well, so I know. That's, I mean, that's a little brutal for some people, but that's just how I feel. I mean, I've been, I want results for people. Well, yeah. I want to go through two more things around this. Um, Kim okay. asked, so how dangerous are the Bluetooth headsets? Very. So I want to talk about that in more of a general term. Like how dangerous is this stuff? How, what are the studies saying that it's doing to us? Mm -hmm. um, and then I want to know the fixes. Okay. Great. Now, that, here's the thing. That being unplugged, but you got it. Are there All of it is artificial. It's man-made and it's generated frequency. Okay. So, what we it's like how dangerous it are cockroaches and their little feces everywhere. How dangerous is rat poop in the soup I was just talking about? I'm sure somebody could eat rat poop, you know, chicken noodle, and have a good GI and no infection. Right now, it's all romaine lettuce. I don't know if you've seen that. There was a so don't eat any romaine lettuce lately because there's a whole bunch of E. coli busting out around the country in the United States. Um, it's about the biological terrain in which it occurs. Because you can say, "Well, I've been using Bluetooth forever. I don't have any problem." Okay, great, good for you. George Burns smoked a dozen cigars a day and lived to be a hundred. I am not going to smoke cigars every day. <laughs> okay. So the point is, is this? It's a great question. Because everything is Bluetooth now. Everything is all trying to get you connected. Smart houses. The science is absolutely clear that it is harmful. One of the ways that you can go and look, because I'm famous for this. Don't believe me just because I'm saying, and I'm a supposed expert. Okay. You must do your own research and come up with your own convictions and test and quantify. That way, you don't, it, then it's not anecdotal, nor it's no, studies, which can be skewed by who paid for it. Or because I'm not some guru. I mean, you know, 
The thing about it is, is I want to teach you how to go find out for yourself. Okay. So there are, um, and we, I can get these links to you, but you can look at the uh, bio initiative report. Okay. And you, let me see if I can get your link. I can look it up. You just keep talking. Yeah. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it's, uh, uh, it's just bio initiative.org. It's a great clearinghouse for everything that I was just talking about. Okay. It's not just linked to it's causation. Now, the reason why it's not out there is because then it makes companies copable. Asbestos. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Big tobacco. Your TV is filled with commercials. If you have been, you or known somebody that's been injured by the, the, the pelvic mesh, blah, blah, or this drug or, mm -hmm. you know, Zimbalta or whatever it is. I mean, there's tons of class action suits out there on drugs, on devices, on things like that. Tons. Mesothelioma. How many times? Everybody knows what the hell mesothelioma is now because of asbestos, but we used to line everything with it. Okay. EMF, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, you're going to find out it's the same. Bioinitiativereport.org is going to blow your mind. Smart meters, all kinds of stuff like that. It is very bad. It's disruptive to so many, all systems. I don't have any of it in my house. None. Zip. And how did you do that? Well, I mitigated it all. <laughs> I went wired connections, right? All my things. So I have, I have a router, but it's not pushing out 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz, you know, dual broadband, whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay. You have to have a router that has an on and off of the Wi-Fi. Or you got to go into its settings and turn it off. And then you just run a cat cable, preferably a shielded, which means there's other stuff to it. I go over all this in my course. But anyways, how do you know you connect that and then you put it into the port of your computer or you can switch it over to. Um, i see if I've got one thing on here. Anyways, you can, everything, you can go wired. That's what you want to do is you want to wire everything in your house. Don't have do you anything not Bluetooth. Use a cell phone or I use you? a cell phone. I do, but I use the 3D approach. If I'm out and about and I take a phone call, I, I, I stay away from using it inside of my car and driving down the road. Because when you're driving down the road using your cell phone, you're getting passed from cell tower to cell tower to cell tower. So your phone is constantly pushing to, to max benefit. So you want to stay still, get out of, of surrounding of a metal box, you know, houses, cars, right? And then you want to, you want to hold it and you want to be on speakerphone. Okay. Or headsets, not the new Bluetooth ones that the Apple now got everybody doing. Jesus. Right. No little, you know, remember that little Bobby Brown microphone? Everybody thought they was cool. You know, I got a Bluetooth mm -hmm. headset in just zapping your brain. So anyway, so yes, you can use a cell phone, but stay still, Try to use it, you know, not in, in a surrounding and keep your time low. So disconnect, distance, duration. Okay. Sense? So that's that one. There's all kinds of things. The best thing is just not to use anything that is wireless. It's but, so hard to do in this day and age. Uh, that's what I'm saying. You know, it was hard to go to school and not smoke in the 50s. <laughs> Everybody was cool. You know what I mean? Menthols, cools, you know, you know, Sam the camel. And I mean, believe you me. Oh, I get it. But you got to raise your standard. What do you want? Do you want to do you want to have dysfunction? Now, the, the current medical establishment does not recognize this as such. But for decades, they miss asbestos. Decades, they missed mm -hmm. cigarette smoking and all kinds of other things. Well, they I'm just reading one of the reports from that website and it says, uh, Conclusions and recommendations from the neurological study. Inhabitants living nearby phone-based stations are at risk for developing neuropsychotic psychiatric problems and some changes in the performance of neurobehavioral functions. So, I mean, yeah. I'm, there Autism, are some leukemia, all these name it, blame it, claim it, tame it game diseases can have electromagnetic fields and forces as part of their causation. Mm -hmm. All of it. Everybody's different. Now we had a lot of these diseases, name it, blame it, claim it, tame it, games, right? Way before these were there. Okay. So I'm not saying they're the sole factor. Okay. Sure. But it's contributory like, yeah. too. 
50 years less, you know, not but 150 years ago. And we don't so. know. There's no, there's no studies of the, uh, proven of their safety. They're just testing. Does it generate heat locally? That's their <laughs> litmus. Because you could do this. You know, have you ever microwaved an egg? I, I have not, but okay. Carl just so What said you can do is, is you can take an egg. Phone. Yeah, you can take an egg still in its shell, and if you microwave it, it will explode. Boom. It's pretty cool. Unless you poke a hole in it. Okay. So here's what you can do. You can either go and stick it in there for two minutes and make it explode because you did it all in one dose, or you can take a microwave, stick your egg in there, and you could turn it on for 15 seconds. And then another 15, another 15. It'll take you a lot longer time to cook it, but you will cook it. You will do it. And then you know what it does to the proteins. You ever microwaved a piece of chicken or something? It's making it very, what we call boingy. It's very yeah. rubbery. That means it, 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 it had a physical change to the structure. Mm. So, you, you, you know, that's it. So, I mean, I, I do agree with Kim here. She said it's not really realistic for most people to go off grid. Um, That's correct. Can we consider this a part of evolution since there seems no escape from this. But you just said that you have escaped from it. You just aren't wireless. Correct. It's pretty much the only. That's it. The so only you thing. do what you can. You, it's what I call raising your standard. That's true. You're, you, mean, you can't go into the grocery store and not get, you know, the, the grocery store's Wi-Fi. Okay. Driving down the road and you got everybody's little, you know, those little lights on the side of your, uh, um, your, your, your rear view mirrors, the little crash indicators, that little light, that's, that's Wi-Fi. You know, checking the around. So, yes. Okay. But that doesn't mean where you can command and control it, and especially where you repair and regenerate where you sleep, it's okay to just have it on. And where you're spending most of your time, right? I mean, you're in bed that's eight hours exactly a day. Right. You got it. So it's very realistic, days. right? Yeah. But I will tell you, I work, I, I'm, I'm a chronic disease resolution specialist. That's what I do. I help patients cure chronic disease that no one can seem to figure out. Okay. And one of the reasons why I'm able to do that repeatedly thousands of times over is because we look and work within the patient's environment as the starting point. What is their Petri dish? And sometimes if I find out they're living in a high rise in Manhattan in a high population density with everybody's got their own router on, I go, you are at a crossroads. You stay there and keep getting what you're getting, you know, definition of insanity, or you can move. I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do? You know how hard it is to find out. And I go, oh yeah, oh, I'm not saying it ain't hard. Marriage ain't, marriage ain't easy either. Raising kids ain't easy either. Going to college, nothing's easy that's worth it. But you got to decide for yourself, what do you want to do? So yes, it's very difficult, but it is very realistic to mitigate it. So what we don't want to do is get soft on the quality standard that we have for ourselves. Because mm -hmm. you will pay the price for it. I promise you. 100%. Mm -hmm. So for me, I just that's the thing. Just like I don't steal when I need food. It's my standard. I just, we just don't, you know, but I got to feed my kids. You know what I mean? No, well, you got to pay for it. All right. Same thing like some days we don't want to work, but we got to work. Okay. Sometimes we don't want to wash the car. Well, we can go to a car wash. Right. Well, I get it. So there are things that you can do. I just really want to encourage people to raise their standard and find themselves as their most valuable possession and treat yourself extremely special and say, I'm not going to put these things in my because you don't have to. Convenience is the number one cause of death. <laughs> it really is. You know what I mean? Unbelievable. It's why we make bad food choices. It's why we buy things and hand stuff through our windows and prepackaged wrapped in plastic and uh, all that kind of fun stuff. So I get it. But at the same time, it's all on what you want to do. The reality is cumulatively and based upon dose over time, it is very detrimental. There's the, the evidence is replete. Okay. There's no question. So what about other things that are, I mean, you talked about lights. I know in our session, we talked about led lights replacing mm -hmm. the, you know, everybody's pushed for those, but now don't use those. Mm -hmm. Are those sending off? I mean, they're not sending off magnetic frequencies. What are those sending off? Actually, they, they, they do. They actually do. Oh. So we'll talk about that for a second. So anything that's powered, um, will put off where electricity flows, magnetism goes. Okay. So we, in the electromagnetic uh, spectrum goes all the way from sound, right? Through various frequencies, light is EMF and then even past. So the whole spectrum 
is EMF. Now in my six environmental inputs, I, I separate out light and sound um, from EMF just because it's a broader category of influence. But yeah, LED lights are powered by electricity. And in the United States, we are on a power grid that is at 60 Hertz. That's the, that's the, the frequency. So alternating current. So current goes in and comes back at 60 Hertz. So you don't see it. That LED is just one steady light to you, but it's flickering. Pop, 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 pop. That goes in your eyeball and disrupts the brain and circadian rhythm and cognitive function. This is why if it's too much, like kids playing video games, there's seizure warnings. You'll throw somebody into a seizure, <laughs> right? So LED lights are potentially very detrimental in a different fashion because of their flicker, the pulsing, also the spectrum of the light. And I'll kind of give you an example. Let's see my little bag of tricks here too. Give you another meter. This is actually pretty cool. Um, so this is a meter for looking at uh, light spectrums. Okay. This is a, called a spectrometer. Okay. Photographers use this. You ever seen that like in TV, they go up to the model and they go, and they, you know, want to see what the light is hitting you know, so they can see how beautiful they are. Well, I can show you the difference in spectrum. I have to turn off my filter off of my, my computer here. Oh, that's right. I already turned it off. So I don't look, you know, yellow to you guys. So anyways, I have filters on my, on my light. Um, so that way, uh, you, it doesn't, you know, make me look yellow. But when, if I'm on my computer, I turn it down. So here's what I could do just to kind of give you an example. Are you, do you have something with... external on your monitor? No, it's on my computer. It's a little, it's an app called F Lux. And watch what I do when I turn my F Lux up like this. You, you'll, you'll, you'll see, see how orange, yellow I get. I'll let it reflect on my face. You see the difference? Mm. Much clearer now too. So. Okay, so that would be this would be when the, when the yellow light is on. In other words, I, I take I'm taking out all the blue from my screen, so that's not hitting my eyeballs. Versus this is the regular monitor. Can you see the difference in the camera now? Yeah, yeah a little bit brighter. Okay, so anyways, the light that is through light bulbs. Okay, their temperature. I, well, I guess my battery is dead on my my thing, so I can't show you, but. Anyways, the spectrum of light that comes off will determine also what your brain does. The sun is the litmus test. It has all the color spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. All the way from, you know, uh, remember uh, um, uh, the uh, red, orange, yellow, indi mm -hmm. blue, indigo, and violet. Okay. So, right. The Roy G. Biv. Okay. So, um, uh, the sun has all of those in balance. So they're all mixed and we have this color light. When we make it from light bulbs, they all have a different temperature, Kelvin. And most LEDs that are out there and even t uh, uh, monitors and screens and stuff like that, they're up in a temperature of light that's wider and bluer based than the sun can ever get. So that's artificial and that disrupts our circadian rhythm, what's going on in our brain and what everything is governed by light. So that can be an issue. So again, you take an environment of convenience where you're on a high speed Wi-Fi on a computer with Bluetooth mouse and keyboard looking at pulsed LED generated light at a spectrum that's absolutely artificial now add time, it makes a combo. It's a hell of a cocktail that people live in. Mm -hmm. So what we do is, is we disconnect the Wi-Fi and we do a wire connection. So we take out the radio frequency. We connect our keyboard and our mouse and we connect. Then what we do is we put a filter on the light spectrum that's coming off of our monitor and we turn down the brightness. We don't need to have the brightness all the way up. You know, so many mm -hmm. people, see that was the other thing I didn't show you. This, you know, this is, if you turn the brightness up on your screen, I'm going to just do this. This this would be normal, right? So this is all that brightness, just bling, just glaring in people's eyeballs, like on this big old 27-inch iMac, right? But you can turn down the brightness, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You don't, you don't yeah. need all that. Yeah. You can turn it down. And I mix in good old Florida sunshine. So I put that natural spectrum in it. So if ever you're on your computer, turn it towards a window. So that way you're getting this light coming in your eyeballs, mixed with this so that way it balances it out. 
don't be on your cell phone or computer. Yeah, there you go. You know, cell phones and computers at night before we're trying to go to sleep because we can't sleep. And then we're wondering why we can't sleep because <laughs> it's just destroying the melatonin in your brain and your sleep and all that kind of fun stuff. So. Well, you talked about light therapy earlier, especially yes. someone like me where we have five hours of gray outside. We don't even get, I think today we got sunshine for the first time. I don't know how long. But so how is that? I mean, that's still magnetic signals, right? Or Correct. But it's of a spectrum that is tuned to our mitochondria. That's what we're supposed to have. And even if it's gray outside, if you take a spectrometer, you're still going to get the spectrum of the sun. It's still going to be there. Right. Okay. So you don't have to have a whole lot of it. All life on the planet on the planet is is governed by the sun. Everything. Our weather's made by the sun, not by humans. I mean, everything this, the, 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 it is amazing. But depending upon the, the zenith angle of where you are geographically, you know, latitude will determine if you're getting into the ultraviolet or not. OK, where you're currently at, you're not getting any UV for nothing, but you need UV. OK for proper metabolism, immunity, and everything. Synthesis of, of pro-hormone D, some people call it vitamin D. Yeah, so is that an alternative to the light therapy because I take vitamin D? Yes, you can, but it has to be the right form and the right dose. You don't want too much or too little. Okay. Okay. So what, what, what would be the right form? Well, it always needs to be D3, cholecalciferol. Mm -hmm. I prefer it to come from uh, sheep wool lanolin that's been hit with UV light as opposed to um, artificial oil like cod liver oil or something like that that they just because remember cod live under the under the under the water they're not uh, solar based <laughs> um, animals though they have the vitamin D in there um, I prefer to get some land mammal vitamin D so they comb it this cholesterol out of sheep's wool lanolin and then they can hit it with UV and that that's better. But you can take a, a, a D3 supplement and I recommend a good uh, a dose daily is uh, 5,000 IU okay. in national units. It sounds high, but that's like micrograms. If you convert that over, it's very little and you'll never get toxicity even close to that, no matter what anybody tells you. But you got to quantify to you, that might not be enough. You need to get a proper vitamin D panel done, which is a marker called 25 OH vitamin D 25 hydroxy vitamin D. That's your storage form of D. And that number needs to be somewhere between 35 and 55, 35, and 55. That's the range. I like to keep mine around 55. You don't get any much better for getting it 70 or 100 or anything like that. It only becomes toxic if it's above 200. Now, all of this I'm quoting you comes from the guy, Dr. Hollick. He looks like um, Mr. Burns from The Simpsons. Great guy. He discovered the marker. <laughs> okay. He is Mr. Vitamin D. He's the bomb.com. Okay. When it comes to vitamin D and everything I'm telling you is that now clinically I've experienced that as well. So if you're not in a UV enriched environment in a day, it's beneficial to, to take a range of somewhere right around a minimum of a thousand IU, but that really just doesn't cover it. Um, 2,000 IU to 5,000, depending upon your geographic location. See, everything is based upon the individual or what I call the biochemical individuality of the patient. So it ranges what a person needs, right? You know, so when you have ranges of labs, right, you're going to be like, well, some people are, you know, when we come up with ranges in medicine based upon a, a sample of a seemingly healthy population. Some of us need to be on the higher end of, of, of the range. Some need to be dead middle. Some can be other. You got to find out what works for you through testing and quantification. So that's the litmus. I can't just tell everybody here's the universal dose. Not everybody is the same. Right. No, I get that. And I know even like now when I've been a little bit more run down with my son sick, I think I need more. I've, I've definitely felt like a little seasonal change in the attitude. But yeah. Kim wants to know what about sunscreens and sunglasses? Are they blocking out the needed? Don't use either. Okay, I'm a redhead. I have a problem with that. I'm going to the right. Canary Islands in a month. There's no way. That, what about that's... cancer? <laughs> like, well, hello. <laughs> yep, UV light does not cause skin cancer. It's not true. 
Okay, it can contribute to it if you burn in excess. But to I say burn, that UV light, I, I got gotcha. you. I'm, I'm going to tighten that up. UV okay. light does not cause cancer. If you any radiation in excess to a weakened tissue that loses tolerance can lead to cell differentiation and DNA damage, ergo cancer. Okay, it's just like saying cell phones don't cause cancer. They can, and they can contribute too. I use a cell phone, doesn't mean I'm going to get cancer. So I want the balanced understanding to be out there. UV light is needed for so many things in the body and functions, hormones, neurotransmitters, a ton of things. It's about balance, the right dose. Okay, so the other thing is never burn, never burn. Okay, so you don't want to burn. People say, well, I will burn if I don't put on sunscreen if you don't have clothing on it. <laughs> so your first option is a physical barrier. Sleeves, drapey stuff, floppy hats, shade. Imagine that, okay? That's the first thing. Now, there are times if you are at altitude, skin, and you got it bouncing off, whatever, I don't wanna burn either. I love having fabulous skin, okay? So I'm not, and I live in Florida. Okay, but the key here is it's about balance and dosage. Same thing like the 3D approach, right? So you got to think about disconnect, get out from get out from on, on the sun to burning you, get some distance between you and it. In other words, that kind of stuff, and then limit the duration. So there are fair skinned people. I'm Irish as the day is long too. Okay, thank goodness I didn't get the I didn't get the red. Not hair. Irish, but I am a redhead. <laughs> oh, okay. I was born. I did have red hair when I was born, but um, you can build up tolerance to it. So you, what you don't want to do is go, I burn, so I'm going to sunscreen and then get out in the sun. Well, then now you're putting toxins in your skin. Okay. There are great. And I didn't know that, but like I'm a surfer and you know, when I'm sitting out there in the water, I'm out there for an hour or two at a time. There's, there's not a chance I'm not going to burn on my well, face. Here's the thing. The water Absolutely. And... Absolutely. So in those cases, you do want to put a barrier on there. And if it can't be a physical barrier, We'll call it a chemical barrier, also known as a sunscreen. So I'm not dogmatic and saying don't use it. Okay. If and when you need to use it, use a healthful one. And there's a lot of different ones, and I can get those to you. Or you can go to ewg.org. That's environmentalworkinggroup.org. And you can look up sunscreens, and they've tested them all and all that kind of fun stuff. It's wonderful. They'll give you the, give you the brands and all that fun stuff. Environmental Working Group. And use sunscreen and apply and reapply. But the adage is not to be extrapolated that you put it on every day because you're going into the sun. That's not true. That we don't want to do. So like I'm saying, if circumstances and environment dictate protection, first seek a physical barrier, secondary a chemical barrier. But don't do it out of reflex. And don't be scared of it. Here's the thing. If you go out and daily... I prefer a minimum of three days a week. Get what we call your med, right? Your medicine, your minimal erythemic dose, the amount of, of UV that will give you a little slight pink hue to the skin. It's called med, minimal erythema, erythemic dose. You want to do that daily. And that's, how, that's how you really have longevity and strong hormones and immunity and fun stuff like that. Okay, on the broad surfaces of your body, your back, belly, and thighs, back, belly, and thighs, not just your face, okay, mm -hmm. not just your decollete and your hands. You got to get it where the sun don't shine, all right? Get up in it. Get your dose, then put your physical or your chemical barrier on. And if you do that a little bit, you will build up the ability to withstand it for longer periods of time, even doesn't if it do as well, doesn't no. it? It's not true. It's overly doing it and burning because we're talking about UV light. Are we talking about UVA or UVB? They have different penetrations in the skin and do different things. So we, we can't turn this into a, a, a UV light discourse. But in other words, I'm giving you these, these generalized recommendations. And you can have lovely skin and the benefits of UV light and not burn. It's amazing.
So that's Great. it. Good to know as I'm headed to a sunnier place very soon. Oh, <laughs> very excited about that. Being back here in the dark. Is as not far as good. sunglasses are concerned, same thing. Don't wear sunglasses. I even have my patients stop getting contact lenses and switch to lenses, glasses, and not having a UV coating on them. There's a huge amount of signaling that happens from ultraviolet light in our brain. It's massive. It's governed, it governs so much. I won't get into the melanopsin and the rhodopsin proteins and all the stuff and the superchiasmic nucleus signaling, you know, from the, you know, there's a lot. So when you're blocking UV light from going in your eyeballs, you're also screwing up the signaling, circadian rhythm, neurotransmitters, hormone, and immunity because you're always, it won't go through the eyeball. There's a special protein in the eye specifically and solely designed to do one thing, and that's to receive and absorb UV light. It's important. <laughs> so if we always have UV you know, contacts on, we're not getting the signaling we need. If we have lenses on that have the, you know, the UV protection on them, same thing. Now, it, back to the thing. If circumstances and geographic location dictate the need for eye protection and sunglasses, do it. Okay? If you're going to go skiing, right? If you're going to be at the beach just blazing, yes. As you can see, I don't have crow's feet, and that's because I don't squint. That's because I go in the sun and I don't wear sunglasses. My eyes are used to it, and I have blue eyes. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, you want to build up, you want to acclimatize. It's just like if you're going to go to altitude. You know, if you're going to climb Mount Everest, you don't just go to Everest and they helicopter you and you start climbing. You have to go there days in advance <laughs> to get used to the altitude. They bring you up and they bring you up and they bring you up. Same thing when it comes to light. So I'm not a fan of sunglasses unless circumstance and location dictate an excess of exposure, then do it. But just every day, you know, getting in the car or walking around the grocery store, shopping and stuff like that, definitely not. Okay. All right. Well, cool. I was going to see if anybody else has any other questions. I know it's your wife's birthday, so we can um, take yes. the last couple of questions. If you guys have them, put them in the chat now and uh, speak now or forever hold your peace, right? Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> All right. Yeah, because that's the big thing I want people to expand their mind on mm -hmm. is there's a lot of noise and confusion in the info space. I get it. People want to share their stories, which is very important. That's been my greatest teacher is my patient's unique stories. Okay. That's my science. It's anecdotal to everybody else, but not to me and my patient. We are in them to, together are the lab and we quantify everything, both with their history and lab assessments and repeat ones. And we find out what works for them specifically, not the same diet. That's great for every homeo sapien out there or any diet that's for this disorder. That's not true. Time, this is why you got mixed bag results. This is why people are still confused and spinning their wheels and not getting re re the, the results that they want. It's because they allow themselves to be homogenized and they follow recommendations that can very well be true and helpful, but they don't quantify and try it on for themselves. That's the differentiating factor. Yes. This diet might be great. And this person, look at all the wonderful thing it did for them. That's, that's great. I'll find you 10 patients that it made them worse, didn't work for them, than vice versa. So it's all about embracing yourself as a category of one and getting past the dogma. Mm -hmm. That's it, man. And you can, you, you, can, you can step out of a lot of stuff by you know, applying uh, that. And disease starts in the environment, not the gut. You know, air, water, light, sound, EMF, and food. That's where your journey starts. Pretty cool. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Well, I so appreciate you spending an hour with us on your wife's birthday. Now go take her out and. Uh, well, she, woke up, she woke up to flowers. I got them on the way back from my hair appointment. So, <laughs> see, ladies have trained me well. Most, I'd say, say seventy percent of my patients are female. So okay, that's the cool. One thing. last thing this is a good <laughs> one to end on is that. Kim says the biggest challenge is finding the right professionals that can offer a holistic approach. These kind of approaches. Mm -hmm. She's in Canada, which is very old school. Any recommendations on finding doctors? Cause I know doctors, my sister-in-law is one of them. She dismisses supplements. She dismisses everything. I mean, you, if it's yeah. not something she learned in medical school, it's sure. even nutrition, sugar. Like she, it's just yeah. amazing to me that she still dismisses it all. 
So how do you find somebody that's more up on well, the research, open-minded? Um, it's very difficult. The, 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 I understand that. Don't turn holistic with an H into a W, which means whole list ick. Okay. If you don't want to have take a whole list of supplements, pills, potions, powders, listen, supplements work. They can be very beneficial. Okay. But the answer is not in pills. The answer is in quantification of you. So to find one is a challenge. I can't give a blanketed answer. The great news is, is I have a completely virtual practice and patients can seek me out. Right. And I see patients. I just got one in Malaysia. Right. I got UK, New Zealand. I mean, Australia, all over the United States. We can do things virtually. There's that, that transcends that. Now I can't work with everybody and I'm very particular with the patients that I do. And there's an application process because I want to make sure that you're ready to do what it takes to transform your world. Okay. And if I'm not a right match, I've trained a bunch of different docs so I can refer you to people that I think might be a good match. In other words, there's options. I wish I could just tell you this is how you find one. That's a little question with a big answer, but I will tell you this. They better have a manifestation in their self of being a pillar of health. Okay. They have to be upright, healthy, bright, vibrant, eyes, teeth, skin, hair, physically living it, doing the work, and then being able to do that for you. If they're not that, if, not, if they have any complaints clinically, well, then you should probably work with somebody else. The next thing is somebody with experience, at least if you have a chronic condition, they need at least a decade or more of clinical experience. There's some great people out there, just like people fresh out of hair school, right? Go to cosmetology school and you go work at Supercuts or, or, you know, hair cuttery. It's all well and good. Okay. But you're going to get a $10 haircut. And there is a difference. Okay. So the key here is experience. Then the third thing would be not giving you a diagnosis, not calling your complaint some type of disease. Hajimoto's, Lyme, fibromyalgia, IBS, that's all BS. I don't give a damn about what we call it. I want to know about that. Last thing, the approach should take into consideration of supporting and treating systems, not symptoms, the whole body. That's what holistic is. Your bowel, your liver, your kidneys, your skin, your respiratory, your blood, your neurotransmitters, your mitochondria, your eyeballs, everything. And that takes some doing. So that would be my litmus. How about that? Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for everybody who showed up today. I sure appreciate it. We love the questions and um, Dr. Beck, you've been wonderful. So thank you for your time and doing this for us. And you, cool. know, you can I, give I, them some links to reach out to me if you want. I'll let you govern absolutely. that. Shoot those over to me. I mean, I, I'll put the website. Let's see. We'll just throw your website up right here. Uh, yep. Dr. Anthony G All right. That's the one. That's the money shot. Well, hey, Julie, I love you. Thank you for bringing me into the circle of your uh, your close loved ones and, and, and the audience as well. It's always nice to do that. I'm not the only one receiving, you know, the only one receiving here. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. So there are there any dashes or anything on your website or nope. it's just? D-R-A-N-T-H-O-N-Y-G-B-E-C-T.com. Like that. That's it. Awesome. All right. Nice. Go give your wife a hug and uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Go get some sunshine. I would if I could. I gotta wait another three weeks. Go find some. You, even if it's sunshine in a can, you'll get you that. That's true. That's true. Actually, it's a great. All right, idea. All right cool. Doctor. Thank you so much, and thank you everyone else for being here. Bye bye.